Derby Wars, racing's biggest contest site is now even bigger with more than 200 games every day. Check out Survivor, Derby Wars' hottest new game. It's fun, easy to play, and for just four bucks, you could win a grand. Just pick a horse to finish first, second, or third and advance to the next race. With daily payouts and games starting every hour, you'll see why fans are racing to play Survivor. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. It cooled off a little bit here in New Jersey. It has been so hot. The racing is hot, Matt. The racing is hot. Just got back from the Arlington Million myself, but this week, of course, we have even a bigger race, Matt. This is a race we've been waiting for for a while now, and it looks like it's coming to fruition. The Pacific Classic is going to be headed by California Chrome, Dortmund, and Beholder. What do you think, Matt? The much-awaited Pacific Classic. It seems like we've been talking about it since January, maybe even since last summer when Beholder won the Pacific Classic. But this is going to be one heck of a matchup when we get to throw Dortmund in there with the uh, California headliners of Chrome and Beholder. Though all those West Coast fans, they're going to have a tough time deciding who to support in that race. Well, California Chrome, I think, is America's horse right now. And, of course, he's been a horse of the year in the past, a Kentucky Derby winner, a Preakness winner, a Dubai World Cup winner. Matt Beholder's a three-time champion, has been the queen of California racing for years now. But Dortmund fits in, I think. Dortmund is also one of the best dirt horses in the world, Matt. And last time in the uh, San Diego Handicap, right? Right there at Del Mar, uh, he gave everything uh, everything that California Chrome could possibly want in that race. Very interesting race. I think we need to to look at that. Interesting also, Matt, that we're getting uh, three horses that like to be on or near the lead. So we're going to talk about the big three. But who knows? Maybe a horse like Hard Aces can rally up if this pace becomes a little too fast. Okay, sure, Brian. <laughs> You're not buying it. All right, no. let's, let's, let's focus in on the big three. Now, interestingly, Dortmund uh, will lose his regular rider, Gary Stevens. Of course, Gary Stevens is also the regular rider of Beholder, and he's going to stick with his longtime companion, Beholder. I can understand the decision. Uh, originally, Bob Baffert said Flavian Pratt was his man. The leading rider at Delmar, the young Frenchman, was going to ride, but he's since done a 180 switch and gone with the more experienced Rafael Bejarano. Do you expect him to be on the lead as he was in the San Diego map? Yeah, I think this is the really interesting part of this race, as you said, Brian, with three horses that prefer to be out front. Um, my view is that if one of them opts to sit off the pace a little bit, I think it's going to be California Chrome. Yeah, California Chrome might have the most ability to rally of the three. Uh, I, I kind of agree with you there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. It's got to be a little cat and mouse game because now it's not one on one. It's it's one on one on one, and uh, no one wants to let Dortmund away easy. Beholder's going to have to maybe be the one to move in on Dortmund first with California Chrome's uh, very very soon behind. But I, on the other hand, I don't think Victor Espinoza especially given how aggressive he's been with some big rides of late at Del Mar and winning those rides. I don't think he wants to let either Dortmund or Beholder get away at the top of the stretch. You remember what happened last year when Beholder got away. Yeah, and, and you know, Brian, I'm not usually a big post-position guy in terms of that being a significant factor in races when you've got really good horses. But I don't know, in, in this case... If, for instance, Chrome drew the one post and and uh, Dortmund in the two and Beholder in the three, that could create a situation where there maybe is a little bit of race riding going on, where maybe these the the jocks try and keep Chrome uh, pinned on the rail, or at that point does Victor have to hustle California Chrome out of the out of the one hole? Um, so. In this case, that might be interesting. But you know, if Chrome draws outside of the other two, I think he's going to be in the catbird seat. 
Yeah, Matt, I, I agree with you. We all remember uh, what happened a couple years ago in the Pennsylvania Derby with Byron. Uh, California Chrome did not have a good trip. He was uh, in, inside and behind the speed that day, and, and that was not his best running style. We've seen California Chrome win so many times when he stalks on the outside and pounces. So I agree with you. I think Dortmund is the, the horse that if he draws the rail, no big deal. That's probably not a bad spot for him. Beholder, on the other hand, Matt, I would I would pretty much say the same thing. Uh, she wants to be behind Dortmund probably early, and I think she would prefer to be outside, maybe outside both of them, especially when we look at what happened in her defeat, her first defeat in, in a couple years when she was pinned down on the rail by the really good champion Philly, Stellar Wind, and Stellar Wind finally got the best of her late. Um, she wants to be outside. But also, Matt, is, is that a sign that maybe Beholder is finally slowing down a little bit? I think that's a question. You know, I, I know after the last race when Beholder lost, uh, Mandela took a little bit of the blame, said he didn't have her at 100%, and, and I think he says she is now. So we're going to see. Uh, and, you know, you're running against California Chrome, who... I don't know if many people are going to argue with me, except maybe you, Brian, that he's the best horse, the best male horse on dirt that we've had in a while, and, and you've got Dortmund in there. At 100%, this is no easy task. This is no Pacific Classic field that she faced last year. Matt, getting back to Beholder, uh, I, I think I, I haven't lost any confidence in her. I think Stellar Wind is really one of the best horses in the country. I think Stellar Wind would actually... I think she could love a mile and a quarter, and I actually think she would have a shot in here. That's how good I think Stellar Wind is. So the fact that Beholder was stuck on the rail that day, and they probably did train uh, for that race as a prep for this race. So I'm expecting to see more of the Beholder we saw last year, which, which does become a big threat in here against two powerful males. California Chrome certainly has been one of the best horses we've had in America now for three years running. He looks better than ever. I think Dortmund is for real. Uh, I'm probably picking Dortmund for second or third in here and Beholder for second and third here. I'm not sure which yet. And, and maybe those post positions do uh, play a part. But I think Beholder, uh, I, I truly believe that was a prep. And I think we will see the real Beholder on Saturday, which sets up a very, very interesting race, Matt. We are stoked for it. We're excited for it. And I think, uh, I think our viewing audience uh, is looking at this race as a big one. Throw in Frosted, and we have a wonderful, wonderful Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah, and, you know, I just, one other thing I want to throw in is, you know, with, with Dortmund, with his physical presence, with his size, you know, he could be a little intimidating if, for instance, like we talked about, if Beholder's on the rail and, and, and Dortmund, the huge Dortmund is to the outside. It, it, it's it's going to be a jockey's race if these three horses are all at the top of their game. Victor Espinosa, Gary Stevens, and Rafael Bejarano now will be the three riders. I agree with you, Matt. Post positions do matter in here. And yeah, I think uh, Beholder and California Chrome more so don't want to be stuck on the rail. Dortmund, uh, Dortmund has been waiting to win something really big. Maybe Saturday's the day. Uh, California Chrome will be my pick. Like I'm sure he's your pick, but... Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not overly confident in him beating both of the other two. It should be fun. Yeah, we, we have to pick a horse. I, of course, am picking uh, California Chrome. If, if there's going to be an upset, uh, using the word upset, meaning that California Chrome isn't going to win, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Dortmund. Brian, what, you have, have you thought at all about what the odds are going to be in this race? Because... Uh, it's really, really fascinating to me what the betting public is going to do. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to figure out exactly what's going to happen. I, I think Beholder is going to get love on one hand, but on the other hand, I think people are going to look at that last race loss. And Beholder cannot be possibly bet as much as last year, which wasn't a weak Pacific Classic, but there just wasn't a California Chrome or a Dortmund in there when she won for fun. Um, I think California Chrome will be a clear favorite. I think he'll be over even money, but I think he'll be a, a clear favorite in the seven to five range. 
uh, depending on how many other horses, I think Dortmund and Beholder will be vying for second choice. I think both of them will be liked. Both of them will be bet. Uh, Dortmund, uh, you know, it's hard to take much away from him. He, I, I, you were talking about his size. I just saw him work with uh, Dre Fong, video of him working with a really talented uh, three-year-old sprinter from the Bob Baffert barn, and just amazing how he dwarfed uh, Dre Fong, who was inside him for that work. Uh, but anyway, uh, if they're both in the seven to two range with California Chrome seven to five, that's what I would project about right now. We'll see. Uh, Beholder is the most interesting of the three on the odds board because she is so beloved. She won this race big last year, but on the other hand, she is coming off her first loss in California in a long time. Yeah, the, it's it's going to be really interesting to me. To me. Uh, Watching the odds board is going to be uh, maybe as much fun as the race. Maybe, but not quite. No. All right, Matt, that's the San Diego, uh, San Diego Handicap, excuse me, that's the Pacific Classic Saturday Del Mar can't miss television. Matt, uh, we have, I, I called those three horses, three of the best dirt horses in the world, and they certainly are, but there's a fourth of the best dirt horses in the world running Saturday. And, of course, that's Songbird. While California Chrome finds huge competition in Dortmund, no pun intended, and Beholder, Songbird is going to run in the Alabama. First time in a mile and a quarter, it's at Saratoga. But we're not expecting the Graveyard of Champions to derail Songbird, are we? I, I got no worries about Songbird in the Alabama uh, she loves it in Saratoga. She already showed that she uh, can perform on the track. I don't know how many horses are going to show up to run against her. I don't think it's going to matter. It's going to be uh, tour de force for uh, Songbird in the Alabama at Saratoga. Yeah, whether it's Weep No More or Go Maggie Go or Floridora, I, I'm with you, Matt. I don't think it matters. A uh, mile and a quarter shouldn't be a problem because she controls the race and she can, she can take the pace down as, as comfortable as she probably needs it. Uh, Go Maggie Go, I think, is a very talented filly, but she's just too good for any three-year-old filly, maybe any three-year-old in the country. She's, she's spectacular, and it'll, it'll be fun to see Songbird doing her thing in another grade one race as uncompetitive as it may turn out to be. Yep, I'll be watching, and, and it'll be terrific. All right, Matt. So we talked about the Pacific Classic and the Alabama, the headliners for this Saturday. Uh, Arlington, we saw a lot of t good turf races. C. Khaleesi, Matt. C. Khaleesi, uh, of course, Mondelez won the Arlington Million. But for me, C. Khaleesi was the most impressive horse of the day. She was that star of the week, Matt. Yeah, uh, Fantastic performance. Who was the trainer of C. Khaleesi, Brian? Might be Chad Brown. Might <laughs> be Chad Brown. Unless you're asking me who trained her uh, prior to her coming to America. No, no. It was that was certainly a Chad Brown reference. Uh, when there's a big race on the turf, Chad Brown has uh, been hard to beat. Chad Brown wins a couple during the uh, festival there at Arlington International Racecourse. Uh, Beach Patrol was a very game winner over uh, one of Aiden O'Brien's many talented three-year-olds. That was Long Island Sound, Beach Patrol. Uh, very game winner, an exciting stretch run in the Secretariat Stakes. The Big Haas, the Big Haas is truly the Big Haas when we're talking a mile and a half or more. Former claimer, keeps on winning better than ever. He looked good in the American St. Ledger. And, and Mondelez, uh, a really good miler when he came over here last year, now proves in his last couple of races, one at York and now over here at Arlington, that he can do the 10 furlongs as well. It'll be interesting if he uh, goes uh, after Tappan again in the Breeders' Cup mile. Yeah, he's, he sure loves to run in, the, in North America. He, he performs well here, so I assume that uh, he's going to come back for one of the races in the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, mile and a half might not be his thing, so I would guess if it's Breeders' Cup at Santa Anita for Mondelez, who is now six and looking better than ever, the Arlington Million winner, it would be the Breeders' Cup mile again, where he ran second to Teppin last year. S uh, coming back to uh, see Khaleesi one more time, I think, Matt, she's the best older uh, female turf horse in the country. I know there's Desita, I know there's Catch a Glimpse, and we may 
We may have Lady Eli back soon, Matt. So, so my uh, assessment of her as the best in the country could come, up, come, come under some serious scrutiny soon if Lady Eli comes back to her old self. That's, that's fun. We have that to look forward to. But C. Khaleesi, fourth winner for Martin Schwartz in the Beverly D. I think that's amazing. He, he finds good mares especially and brings them over, and they do well. Chad Brown has been the beneficiary of late of that. And uh, C. Khaleesi uh, impressed me quite a bit with her turn of foot. Yeah, talk about winners in Chicago, Brian. I think we would be remiss if we did not mention the day that Florent Giroux had uh, at Arlington Park on Saturday. Yeah, Florent Giroux won an early race. Then he won the first three graded stakes. That's the big Haas. That's C. Khaleesi, and that's Beach Patrol. Uh, world approval faded a little bit late in the Arlington Million, but then he was right back at it in the grade three pucker up uh, after the million where he actually got put up. Uh, he got put up in the pucker up in a three horse finish where the, the winner actually bothered the horse that finished third a little bit more. So uh, noble beauty with Florence Giroux, Giroux, who just barely lost the race, got put up. Florence Giroux had five winners, four graded stakes, two of them grade one. Pretty big day for Florence. Yeah, that's not even. That's not just a big day, Brian. Right there, that's a big year. That's a big year. Jockey of the week, no doubt. All right, Matt. Another good show. Thank you to our producer, our new producer. Thank you to Brett Workman for the fine job today. Brett Workman's earning his keep already, and <laughs> of course, we want to thank our sponsor, the best tournament site out there, Derby Wars. Folks, thank you for watching. We always appreciate it. We will see you next week on another edition of Horse Center.